Hey look, buddy. I'm an engineer. That means I solve problems. Not problems like, what is looks maxing? Because that would fall within the purview of your conundrums of philosophy. I solve practical problems. For instance, how am I going to construct a multitude of tiny pieces to create any structure or device my brain-rotted mind could imagine? The answer? Use Lego. And if that doesn't work, use more Lego. So I was setting up my bedroom in my new apartment, and I decided to put up a few of my old Lego sets on display. These are some of my favorites over a decade of collecting, and they're just a fraction of the sets that I grew up with. I chose these sets because they display and encapsulate different aspects of my personality. The space shuttle is because I worked for NASA before. The dinosaurs are there because I always wanted to be a paleontologist when I was little. And I've always had an affinity for Star Wars, which is why the most amount of sets are from that series. The mechanized at, -AT walker is the oldest, and I believe the DeLorean time machine, or Apollo 11, are the newest. And oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. I have to say that my absolute favorite set, though, is the Grand Piano, which you can play yourself. In my 22 years of playing piano, I will stand by that this is the coolest one I have ever played. If you're familiar with my background, you know that I'm an industry engineer, a bachelor's in engineering physics, and a master's in nuclear engineering. Engineering was pretty intense for me, because I wouldn't consider myself particularly smart. I certainly am curious, though, and I will say with certainty that LEGO was an integral part of fostering and nurturing that curiosity. Throughout my entire life, I've had family, friends, and teachers just assume I'd be a good engineer after looking at the things I would build. That would be a good guess for a person like me, but is it for everyone? And does more exposure to LEGO make you a better engineer? That's what I'd love to discuss with you today, so sit back, open a new set, and let's construct our way straight into this. If you Google the question, do LEGO make you a better engineer, the first results are unequivocally yes, specifically on the topics of design, scale, tension, compression, bracing, loading, and other concepts of structural creation. And while I will let you know my opinion in a little bit whether I disagree or agree with this sentiment, I think it's worth looking at my personal background growing up and what other toys and games and activities I was interested in. I had an affinity for dinosaurs, Pokemon, and other creatures and things outside our incarnate world. And one might say the largest part of my childhood was Lego, something that could create things in my own hand. I suppose there's all always been a draw to Lego. The only limit is your own imagination. And I most certainly feel that Lego helps bring out the most creative and curious parts of me. But I didn't start building Lego until I was roughly six or seven years old. And when I got them, the sets were based off of things I liked, primarily Star Wars. It would be a matter of time before a galaxy far, far away would be reconstructed in my parents' basement using Lego. And don't get me started on how much of an affection I have for something like the Lego movie, which has aged like a fine wine. I could honestly spend an hour talking about it, but that's not the focus of this video, so we'll continue. As I built things, I would learn about the mechanisms of each set, and I preferred sets that had some dynamic motion to them. And I think that's a massive distinction between the architect or building sets. Sets that are static can convey such brilliant emotion and character to them. Truly, they can be great works of art. However, when you have a dynamic set, that's what gets my gears going, quite literally. That's because you don't really expect something as simple as all these tiny little pieces to be moving in such a way, especially during the early stages of building. And that's quite a nice segue into how sets are constructed. How oh, can you read this? There's pictures. Well, some people use their imagination. The instruction manual is like that of furniture from Ikea. It's all pictures for each step. The lack of words, or only using words in minimal sense, helps to make each set universal, so people from all kinds of backgrounds can build them. Furthermore, in recent years, LEGO has been cognizant about making their sets as accessible as possible. The interior of sets will now have many different colors to help builders along the process. There are tools that can help you remove pieces that you've mistakenly placed. Yes, no need to break your fingernails just to get that flat 1x2 piece off. 
and bags now hold a set number of parts for certain steps. Back in my day, Lego sets didn't come with bags that told you the order of how to put the pieces in. And quite honestly, I prefer it that way. I call it playing Lego on hard mode. Here's a picture of me doing that with the DeLorean time machine. The reason I do that is because I like the challenge. I suppose my mind finds it more engaging. And while it makes the time spent a little longer, it makes that time building a set more memorable. That need to always be innovating and building my own things would carry over into modifying existing sets. For example, I had modified my X-Wing Starfighter to be able to fire little missiles. A very simple modification, but it's used to give you a picture of what I was looking at. Then I would build my own vehicles from the extended Star Wars material. Things that never had sets made for them. I would look at something and try to replicate it, which is personally how I draw best on the canvas. I like having a reference so that I can transfer that image to the page or a new Lego design. And of course, I would tear down sets and try to build my own, incorporating gears and dynamic features to help give whatever I wanted to make a special feature. I believe that aspect of building helped my engineering brain the most. However, I recognize not every builder is like me. Engineering and the sciences are quite a difficult field for many people to grasp their minds around. And I think that's because problem solving is such a key part of it. Not every problem can be solved in the same way, but usually there are some methods that are more useful than others. There are core engineering principles definitely at work in Lego and it distills them down so that most people can understand them. These problems tend to have obvious answers though, as one works through a thought out solution by building a Lego set. In my opinion, Lego helps the builder understand scale the most. What helps this is the minifigure, the standard Lego character. It's a good anchor point for how to build because then you can design a set around that idea. But if you look closely on the display I have, there's a whole wide variety of scale by comparison. Sets like Apollo 11 are two figures scale compared to Buckingham Palace, which is much smaller. I would say I started building and expanding to smaller scale first before doing larger scale. And this was because a fewer number of pieces was easier to manage and make something than something large. I always enjoyed places like Legoland or the Lego conventions that people of all different backgrounds and walks of life would come together to show their appreciation for building. When I look at them, I'm certainly able to learn ideas and start planning my own next build. But that's how my mind works. I have a creative's mind, as many engineers do. I think some engineer types excel best when following directions as quickly as possible, while others, like myself, tend to branch out a bit more from the original instructions. Engineering concepts are certainly exemplified in Lego, but I don't think they're the core aspect of it. And that would be obvious to many people. As someone who's worked on both sides of the engineering coin, R&D and manufacturing, I have a pretty balanced perspective and understanding of the common early career engineering positions. There's a huge part of work in the modern engineering field that's done with computers, especially with the use of programs and virtual tools like Excel. Even the math that you spend all your engineering degrees struggling through just trying to pass every single exam, a lot of it can be distilled down into certain programs. Now, I have a physicist's background, so I understand how to derive those equations at a deeper level, but many engineers tend to rely on the formula sheets, even in industry. Le grill. What the hell is that? Lego has nothing to do with math, though. They're a form of craft and genuine works of art and architecture that can be instructed from your own imagination. They are leagues better and more engaging than spreadsheets or Fortran. Not every person who builds Lego is fit to be an engineer, but I would say almost every engineer is a lover of Lego, because it reminds them why they chose this career path in the first place. I'm fairly convinced I wouldn't have chosen to major in engineering and stick with that decision had I not been inspired at a young age with this stuff. I've learned quite a few things in my many years of experience as an engineer. You realize very quickly that you don't have time to do the things you love, like building new Lego sets and editing YouTube videos. But that's primarily because I let the toys that inspire me take me on a bizarre adventure of different jobs and experiences. They're intense, they take a lot of time, but they're very rewarding. And that's the reason I'm making this video. Not only to tell a brief story about how I personally love LEGO, but hopefully let that inspire you to keep building. There's a sense of pride that comes from completing a set, and LEGO has the lowest barrier to entry when it comes to the financial cost and social acceptability, compared to other, more intense construction hobbies. Hence why in my new room, I chose only to display LEGO on these shelves. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video. This topic has been on my mind for a little bit, and I wanted to know what you guys think. Shout out if you're an engineer or just a typical LEGO lover in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. I really love and appreciate the support. Always continue striving to inspire yourself and others. God bless, and I'll see you all next time.